Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is a quick introductory video outlining what we're going to be doing in this series. Uh, what we're going to be doing is creating a mod pack as the title would of course suggest. Um, we're going to be working with the Technic platform, which is what you can see on screen in front of us. And just as an example, this is a uh, mod pack that I have been working on personally. I just released alpha version 1.1.0 uh, last night, as you can see, uh, it says posted a minute ago. Um, so the, the Technic platform is a platform in which you can make your own mod pack and they will appear in here. So people will then be able to search them. So if I just put in, for instance, O Gaming, they have some really, really nice mod packs well put together. They got something for everyone. So there are lots of different mod packs on this platform and you can upload yours as well by simply signing up to Technic and going to create a mod pack. And you put in the name of your pack, choose a version, all this stuff and accept the terms. It will then appear in my mod packs. Um, as you can see, there's mine here. Uh, you can write your description, you can put out status updates, which is that there, which, is, oh, did I just close that? Oh no, it's here, I've just opened it twice. Uh, which is this bit here, as you can see. Let me just close that one behind. So it all appears here. Um, the change log that I released just last night is quite a big, healthy change log. And you can edit the pack and change everything about it. So you've got all the information. You can do your description. Uh, there's a place for your credits and such, which he's cleaning up on mine. And of course you've got your logo and banners, you've got version numbers and contributors are people who can edit your mod pack or see it and use it during like a closed private alpha where nobody else can download it. So that is the Technic platform. Um, I will start off by saying however that this isn't going to be a short series where we just, uh, that's my dog barking, <laughs> where we just throw a bunch of mods into a folder, name it mod pack and upload it to the Technic platform. Instead, we're gonna be diving much deeper than that and having a look at some common problems that can arise when putting together larger mod packs and how to deal with them. So we're gonna start out probably in the next episode with setting up our workspace. And you can set it up any way you want, but there are certain ways that it has to be set out for the Technic platform. And there are also certain things that I like to do that can make it easier to keep track update, back up, all that stuff. Uh, we're also going to need a name for our pack and a description. I've decided already that I'm going to make a pack for this series. Uh, I'm actually going to be building a pack from scratch during the series um, because it's a pack that I really want to put together and well, you may as well kill two birds with one stone I guess as the saying goes. Uh, I'm going to call it the Build Guild and it's going to be a creative mod pack uh, aimed at single player which is just going to be a pack all about well, as the name would suggest, building stuff. And there's going to be no theme, so it can have anything that's decorative. It doesn't matter whether it's medieval, sci-fi, modern. I'll, I'll throw it all in there. And yeah, hopefully we, I'll have a nice creative pack that I can do some builds on. Because if you're a regular subscriber, you know that I am a builder. I do enjoy making um, build tutorials and stuff, but I've never really done it with mods. So that would be an interesting thing for me to do. So we will be looking at her name and description and why I, why I like to do that early. Then we'll go on and move into some tools, which I have a nice big list for us to look at. After that, we'll look at, uh, not necessarily in this order, but after this, we will look at uh, mods, where to find them, keeping credit lists and all this stuff. As you, as you can see, just to save time, I already have a list here that I've downloaded. Uh, they're in a folder ready to be used. Um, from there, we'll go into dealing with conflicts because there are a number of things that can conflict. In 1.7 and beyond, block and item conflicts have pretty much been elimin uh, eliminated but we still have id conflicts with enchantments it's quite a common one uh, potions there's also biomes dimensions entities and yeah there's, there's, there could be quite a few different things from there we're going to go into messing with recipes because we can actually change remove and add brand new recipes and this is a bit that a lot of people are unaware of when they throw together a mod pack um, yeah, you can completely remove a recipe. You might want to do that if there's an unbalanced god item. For instance, the Lordcraft mod pack that I put together has both the Hunger Overhaul, Spice of Life, and Thirst mods, which makes it difficult because uh, you, you need to work on Pam's Harvest Craft to make meals to keep yourself well fed. And there was a problem that with Abyssal Craft, which added a food called the MRE, 
or meal ready to eat and it gave you a huge amount of hunger. It, it would basically fill your hunger bar twice. It was that good. And all it required was carrot, uncooked potato and a piece of meat. So it basically just broke. It, once you'd figured that out, it, it unbalanced the mod pack. So I removed the recipe and made it so it can only be found as a rare sort of special food in dungeon loot. So that's an example of why you'd want to remove a recipe. It may also be that a recipe is a little bit too easy. You might want to change, say for instance, a recipe that requires um, a diamond. It might be a bit too easy to get. You might want to increase, uh, change the diamond to an emerald. So you can alter a recipe. You can also add brand new shapes and shapeless recipes. And you can also alter the recipe to be compatible with the ore dictionary. And it's also possible to add recipes to the furnaces as well as define items as fuels. So if you wanted to use an ender pearl as a fuel in the furnace, sure, go ahead, it can be done. And then we will look at uh, preparing for distribution. Your folder has to be set up in a certain way and you have to include forge and things like that. We'll go over that when we get to it. Pretty easy stuff. And then finally, if we get this far, depends on the interest that we get, we will look at solder. And solder is an application uh, developed by the Technic Platform, written in PHP and MySQL, which for those of you who aren't web geeks is, um, as you can see down here, I actually use PHP, I have done for years. It's basically a uh, server-side web development language. Most websites on the internet actually use PHP, and MySQL is the query language to query data to and from a database. Um, so using this, we can set up a web server where you can add incremental uh, updates, which is a lot better than just uploading. Um, how can I put it? Uh, the way it works when you upload an update to Technic, you would completely update your link to wherever the latest version is. That means that your users aren't able to downgrade to later versions, and it also means that if you release a small update, for instance, let's just say you change one value in a config you change a, a true to false somewhere in a config. Well, if you upload that change, then your users would have to re-download re your entire pack, which seems a bit silly. With Solder, it kind of eliminates that and allows you to have small incremental updates. It's a hell of a lot better, but you do need to have a web server, but we can use a free one for demonstration purposes, or if you already have a website, then you can tie it into there. So we're gonna look at installing and setting that up. But that'll be the very last thing we do because it's quite a complicated thing to get your head around if you have no experience with web servers. Um, just as an example of some of the things we're going to do when it comes to, uh, when I said here, no here, messing with the recipes, well we're going to be looking at something crazy like this, which might scare you straight away, but don't worry, it's actually easy. And there is also a, a mod, uh, an in-game GUI that allows you to do this by clicking in on screen. It's not as powerful, but if if you struggle with this kind of stuff, then you can use that and we'll go over how to use both. Um, I'm just gonna quickly explain what this is. Uh, basically what this does is it takes a block from the uh, rock grinder mod, which is a mod that allows you to grind cobblestone into gravel and then gravel into sand. It's a nice little mod. And the original recipe here, this bit, um, basically what this is saying is, uh, if you look at it, this is actually the, the crafting grid. So you've got the top left, top center, top right, uh, left center Which is nothing. So basically what that's saying is to craft this we need a stick iron ingot stick cobblestone An empty space in the middle cobblestone 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 so you can kind of visualize that recipe uh, That's why I lay it out this way. It's easier to do the problem. However, is that this or stick wood was actually Minecraft stick or stick, I can't remember which one it is. It doesn't really matter, this is for demonstration. The problem here is that, if I remove this for demonstration, what this is now saying is that I'm looking specifically for the stick from Minecraft. That was a problem for me because I'm using Gany Surface, which also adds birch sticks, jungle sticks, spruce uh, sticks. I also have Natura, which adds sticks for the various trees that Natura adds. And I couldn't use those sticks in this recipe. It had to be the vanilla Minecraft sticks, which seems silly. So what we did is we came in and we said, no, I want to use from the ore dictionary, uh, I think it was stick wood, and then replace that up here. If I can actually grab it, there we go. If I can 
oh, God, I can't click today, and change that. What that now says is this recipe can use any stick that has been added to the old dictionary under stick wood, which all of the sticks were. So now I can make this recipe or re make this block using any stick in your dictionary. So this is an example of why you'd want to do this. Uh, here's a second example here. This one's from Tinker's Construct. T Construct Metal Block 5 is actually the ID for uh, a block of tin. I'll show you how to get these IDs, so don't worry about that. You can just do it in game with a command. And the problem I had here was, as I've listed, uh, I couldn't make this block of tin using Abyssalcraft tin. And Abyssalcraft doesn't have its own block of tin. So that bugs me. Uh, dogs, don't make noise during a video, please. <laughs> They're fighting over a bone. Uh, boys. Hang on, let me just pause. Um, as I was saying, sorry about that, uh, the tin from Abyssalcraft couldn't be used to make a block of tin from Tinker's Construct, which seems a bit silly. It was looking specifically for Tinker's Construct ingot tin. So again, all I've done is changed it to or dictionary ingot tin, which means any ingot that's been placed in your dictionary and the tin from Abyssalcraft had been. I can now make a block of tin using both the tin from Tinker's Construct and the tin from Abyssalcraft. Great, simple stuff. So. We can also do many other things using that system, uh, including changing the names of blocks in game. So if I wanted to change, for instance, the item bread to Lord Dan's awesome sandwich of yumminess, then I could do that. Um, we can also hide recipes completely from not enough items. We can also add recipes to mods, such as the Blood Altar in Bloodcraft and things like that. But that's a bit more advanced and I might go over that in maybe a bonus video, depending on how this series goes. That's a bit further in depth, probably a bit more advanced but anyway that's what I'm hoping to do in the series and I'm hoping to go as you can see a lot more in depth than some of the short videos explaining just how to throw your mods into the folder uh, and upload it to the Technic platform so if you're interested in this series then please like the video and leave a comment let me know because I don't want to go through all of this if nobody's going to be watching it and hopefully we'll end up with a nice series you'll end up with an awesome mod pack which you can share with me later on you know so I can check it out and I shall see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching and take care.